Thank you everyone for joining us today for our play webinar. We are so excited to have you here. This is a fantastic topic, one that's near and dear to our heart. This is facilitating play, driving innovation success with playful methods. If you are just jumping on, I know a lot of you put where you're from, but if you're just joining us, continue to do so. And don't forget throughout this webinar to reply to everyone so we can see what you have to say in the chat. This is a really exciting event. We're super pumped that so many of you have joined. You may have noticed that throughout 2022, we've been doing our webinar series called EBCO Obsessions, and this is one of them. And this is where different members of our amazing team present on topics that they are passionate about. And this is one that Jane brought to us. We've had webinars on ergonomics, we've done coffee, we've done the creative process, and now we are here to talk about the benefits of facilitating play. If any of you have joined us on webinars in the past, let us know. If you have ideas and things that you're obsessed with for the future, let us know. We always want to hear from you. All right. On the next slide here, you can see our EBCO values. In this incredible year of growth that we've had, we've been very active in identifying our values, bringing them to life. And as our team has grown, we've looked at ways that we can bring our values to life as they are core to what we do here at EBCO. Our values are obsession, openness, fun, action, impact, and excellence, and we could probably do a webinar on every single one of these, but today we are beyond excited to bring to life fun. Fun is important to us, and that is inherently tied to facilitating play. We believe that bringing play into ideation and into the ideation process helps our team and our client teams elicit the absolute best results throughout the creative process. We've seen it over and over again in the work that we do with our Fortune 1000 clients who are grinding day in and day out that bringing a little bit of play and fun to the process brings so many ideas to life. And that's why you can hear the passion in my voice when it comes to play. So you might be wondering how we bring play to life in our work. All sorts of things, EBCO's immersive trend expeditions. These are world-class immersive and curated explorations of trends. We go to domestic cities, we go to global cities, we go all over our teams travel now. We're so happy the world is, is mostly back and open. We actually have some super fun infield expeditions coming up, New York and some abroad. One super playful thing that we also do is experiential trend boxes. Some of you may have experienced them in the past, but this brings products and experiences and trends to life, and it really enhances the ideation process. It's very interactive and fun, gets those wheels turning. And then we also do workshops, in-person, virtual, things that are, are very great for ideating and experiencing the trends in a way that we can leverage them towards really great output. Oh, someone said that they love the trend boxes. Yay. Thank you, Heidi. I'm so happy to see that. All right. Well, I am going to pass it over to our very amazing Jane to lead us through what we will cover in today's webinar. Jane is a strategist on the EBCO team. She's extremely passionate about play and she is integral in designing programs for our clients. She is on the front end of our process and we dig in and we create these programs together. She knows all about EBCO and another fun fact. She happens to be a competitive tennis player. She's based in Denver. She is awesome and she is going to take it away. It's all you, Jane. Thanks for the wonderful introduction, Erin. Great. So in this first chapter, we're going to dive into how we actually define play and then to hopefully expand that definition today. But before we jump in, uh, you know, I'd want to know what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think about play? Please drop your answers in the chat. We'd love to hear them. Let's hear some voices. Awesome. Ooh, youthfulness, children, kids. Yep. Joyful activity, things that bring us joy. I love that. Oh, how would my child approach this? That's a great point, Heidi. Okay, so seeing a lot of kids, Aaron, love that big ideas and creativity, low stress engagement. Janelle, love this imagination, fun, creativity, fun. That's our value. That's perfect. Thanks. That's that's a perfect segue. So, you know, like we're seeing in the chat, there are a lot of different definitions of play. Scientists and other researchers have come up with inclusive definitions for play for, for play you know, including ones that are broad and open for interpretation and reimagination. But these definitions uh, that, that we're, we're going to use today are captured here on the right. First, 
Play is a behavior or activity carried out with the goal of amusement and fun. Second, play involves an enthusiastic and in the moment attitude or approach. And then third, play is highly interactive among play partners or with the activity itself, which is one of the de definitions certainly captured in the chat here. It's also important to note that there are physiological benefits to play as well. So when you engage in play, you release endorphins. And those are the hormo hormones that are pain relieving and make you feel good. So we wanna get those endorphins flowing. Play also increases laughter, which enhances your intake of oxygen-rich air, and it stimulates your heart, lungs, and muscles. Who needs a workout when you can just play, right? That's <laughs> There's also this misconception that play is just for kids. I think that came through in the chat here. But in fact, limiting that play, that practice of play to child's play isn't helping anyone. That's why it can be so beneficial for adults because it's pleasurable and enriching. Research has shown a slew of cognitive benefits from helping with social skills to keeping adults curious about their work. So today we're gonna to dig into all the different types of play patterns. We have six here, seven here we'll cover today. And we'll get into all of these in a bit, but what you'll notice is that these play patterns play, pun, in, pun intended, with different senses and parts of the brain. Play comes in many forms and can permeate into different parts of our lives and our work. So we've talked about how play can have an, have an effect on your body and your mind, but let's talk about how play can have an impact on your work and actually boost your results. But first, a quick poll. How would you rank the importance and prioritization of play at your organization? So let me launch this here. When you're thinking about answering this poll, you can ask yourself, do you have opportunities for spontaneity? Do you have room for creativity and out of the box thinking and idea sharing? Great, it looks like most of us have answered. So I'm gonna close the poll here. Awesome. So mm -hmm. looks like we had a, a clear winner with 55% saying it's important for us, but we don't always think in these kinds of frameworks. Glad to see, you know, low priority, it's uh, only 23%, but that's also tied with top priority. So I think there's some things to be, be learned here today. So let's dive into how play can boost your results. First, play leads to inspiration. It makes you feel alert, it raises energy and boosts those positive feelings that keep you going. You know, play often engages different parts of your brain and your body and gives you that rush of aliveness and adrenaline that is typically only found in the moment. Play becomes you know, self-motivating because it's fun. And I think that's a, a key takeaway of gamification. Games typically incorporate a lot of different mechanics in order to make things more exciting for the users. So when you're actively participating in something, it automatically becomes more meaningful to you. And players are able to explore and reach goals by making their own choices in order to reach those goals. So being in control of one's actions and how that game turns out will also add another layer of meaning there. Yeah, and I would just encourage everyone to, to check out the content on this page. If you ever think that your team is feeling static or the ideas are not flowing or people are seemingly unmotivated for periods of time, it might be a great opportunity to really pump in some play so that your team can boost that creativity. All the teams that we're working with and most of you on this call, uh, innovation and ideas are core to your deliverables. So it might be time that play is core to your process in, in order to enable it. Great build, Aaron. thanks. So moving on here, play can also have an impact on how we ideate and how effective those sessions can be. If you've ever participated in an EBCO ideation session, you'll know we're constantly incorporating play into our workshops. We found that when you create a playful environment or incorporate some sort of gamification into your ideation process, you can build up that confidence to navigate the unknown and create a real flow during these sessions to foster that collaborative environment that ultimately generates more ideas in a shorter amount of time. And play often develops flexible thinking and activates your imagination to get you thinking in new and surprising ways, which is, of course, perfect for ideation. Play can also create a more inclusive environment to foster collaboration. It instantly equalizes every member of the group. 
everyone is trying to figure out how to play together and it sets the stage for ongoing generative co-creation. And when you're playing, sometimes you let your guard down, you need to trust your teammates, show them that you respect them and expect that same respect when you're playing a new game and putting yourself out there. And of course, with collaborative games, the thinking shifts from me and mine to ours and look what we did. And just like we all can play, we all have the capacity for creativity. And it's really a universal training tool. Play challenges our way of thinking and pushes us to think creatively and form ideas from different perspectives. Often at work, we are leaning heavily on that left brain analytical thinking, but by incorporating our right brain creative side, you know, we can become energized and create opportunities for connection and collaboration and offer a different experience or emotional connection to one another. And finally, play helps with innovation. Play enables more risk-taking and spontaneous behaviors and breaks us out of that traditional mold and way of thinking and doing things. Play also allows us to build on others' ideas. Um, you know, we often use improv techniques like yes and exercises. Uh, play just creates this safe zone where you have that permission to experiment with breaking boundaries, removing guardrails, and to really experiment without that fear of failure. And at Epco, we, we love this quote here by Mark Twain, work and play are words used to describe the same thing under differing conditions. We truly believe that play can be a powerful catalyst for discovery, problem solving, and for innovation, of course. It frees us from traditional constraints and encourages us to challenge that status quo. So I'd like to throw it back to all of you. you know, how does play come into your work? Please drop that in the chat. Oh, I love this Peter Pan perspective from Marcos. Playing might be for kids. If so, we all shall want to be children forever. After all, children are known for creativity and happiness. Uh, let's go to Neverland, Marcos. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, Aaron, I love that you're calling out all the senses that we play with. We, we taste, we smell, we touch. It's, it's all about tapping into all those different types of play to activate all those parts of the brain. I love, Dan, I love your use of playful tenor. You know, it doesn't have to be that complicated. You don't need an extravagant activity. It could just be the way you're facilitating conversations that fosters those kind of environments. That's great. Jackie, that's a great point. You know, it's hard to be playful sometimes in remote settings, but hopefully in this next chapter, we'll, we'll come away with a few techniques for for staying playful, even in a remote world. Great, awesome. For our last chapter here, we're gonna double click into the seven patterns of play. And for anyone who needs to sell play in, internally, get some budget to do things that are a bit fun, you will have this deck. So this deck can help you tell your story and hopefully launch some new fun, exciting things with the work that you do. Great point, Erin. So today, you know, the, the seven patterns of play we're going to cover today are attunement play, body and movement play, storytelling and narrative play, object play, imaginative and pretend play, social play, and creative play. And can't you tell without even digging into these that you probably already can start guessing just based on the names what these might be and start connecting the dots to things that you're doing or it might even be inspiring you already to try new things but wait till you see wait till you see what Jane says about each of these it's it's fun it's just fun you guys it's just so fun thanks Erin yep so we're going to start with attunement play so attunement play is the very basic building block of play a lot of times we think of this as a parent and baby playing peekaboo making eye contact Having that first, you know, I see you, I understand what's going on here moment with mimicking and mirroring. So attunement is really that attention, observation, and connection. And again, it's that very basis of where play comes from. And we always use kind of that attention, observation, connection model as part, as a core part of our exploration here at EBCO. You know, similar to those building blocks of play, 
we leverage clients existing insights frameworks hypotheses to get to that really actionable innovation that makes sense for their unique strategic challenges so body and movement play this is something we often see with you know standing up moving around that can really change the energy in the room when you can use your body and movement and you'll see movement play often in improv as well or when you think of recess and kids running around uh, of course, when we take clients on trend expeditions, we are sort of like kids running around at recess or on a field trip, and we're, we're getting in and out of vans and moving from stop to stop. And in some of our live workshops we run recently, we've, we've had attendees, you know, shake out or jump in circles to mix in some physical movement to increase or decrease heart rates, depending on the movement. And this can be really great for virtual meetings too. you know, giving yourself that opportunity to stand up and stretch towards the edges of your screen can really change the energy in your own personal room. And of course, you can leverage body and movement play to facilitate innovation by incorporating different types of movement into ideation sessions to prevent your body from stiffening up, stiffening up while helping to avoid brain fog. So storytelling and, imagine, and narrative play. So Storytelling and storyboarding is, of course, a huge part of the work that we do here at EPCO. Uh, we often put people together to share stories and ideas with, uh, with one another. And we find that there's a really an immense value in actively listening too. We consider how storytelling and story listening can really come together to be a playful activity and how we can bring ideas to life by creating a story about an innovation idea that can really inspire your team or, or prompt deeper thinking. Object play. So object play is all about building things or playing with physical activities. So this is using your hands, um, you know, playing together in that way is a great opportunity um, to build and play with others, which feeds into lessons about teamwork and collaboration. This is also an opportunity to, to think about, you know, for example, building blocks. Uh, they may fall down, you may need strength on a certain side, or you might have to balance things, but ultimately it's all about problem solving, testing, and finding solutions as we build things together. And these might seem fairly obvious, right? But that's some of the best parts of, that I love about play. It's usually pretty simple concepts, but it's about how we might apply these to the work that we're doing. We can build object play into our innovation process by doing a seated activity such as origami or even magic tricks or playing with Legos as icebreakers, which keeps everyone engaged and loose and collaborative. So imaginative and pretend play and this is somewhat similar in ways to storytelling where you can come up with creative stories, but at its core, imaginative and pretend play is a great opportunity for getting people to try on new beliefs and have no judgment and no rules. This works really well with brainstorming and thinking of things that don't exist. And of course we often do this in our work, right? We sometimes think of outcomes and scenarios and other categories through future scenarios and we eliminate guardrails and work towards work backwards from there. So imaginative and pretend play really allows us to push beyond our own category, perhaps to think about opportunities in completely uncharted territories using your imagination. Social play is all about playing with others. So asking, you know, how well do we play with others when we're collaborating or working together? And thinking about how we can use play that is collaborative or relationship building. Uh, I, you know, I, I find that social play can easily turn into competitive play as well, which I personally am a very competitive person, so that that's often the case for me. Um, but this can really be leveraged to facilitate innovation when we think about turn taking, sharing, building on each other's ideas, you know, possibly through improv techniques like yes and, um, and again, these are things that we've learned as kids, but we're really relearning this year when with uh, the new people we're playing, you know, especially even as adults. 
And the last one we'll cover here today is creative play. You know, so much play can connect and stack with each other. So we'll see attunement play mashed with body and movement play, but creative play is all about expression. So this is, you know, you're painting something, you're making a song, you're really thinking about how this is a creative outlet for play and thinking about how you can be creative in whatever you're doing. It could be as simple as just getting dressed in the morning. That's a form of creative expression. But ultimately, it does allow for an opportunity for expression and that connection to self. What I personally love about creative play is that sometimes it could be an individual activity, which, you know, for people who social play maybe is a bit much, or those that really want to express their own selves through artwork or song or music, creative play is, is perfect for them. And at EPCO, we leverage a lot of immersive tools, such like, like trend boxes, uh, co-creation sessions to really inspire and bring out that creativity across client teams. So that was a really quick blast through all seven of these play patterns. But again, I wanna reiterate what's really great about these is that they're seemingly obvious, but it's nice to have a pattern when I think about, you know, what I wanna do next with my team, especially when I find myself like stuck in the same icebreakers or the same ways that I've gone about playing in the past. So I can really start to think about how I can do that activity while stacking on body and movement play or creative play to think through how I would have people play to help me think outside of the box um, for even how I would design for play. So last poll here, and let me launch this. Yeah, I'll read this one. So what pattern of play activity would inspire you in your work? So when you get off today and you're thinking of what to make happen in your department or at your company, do you think moving around during meetings, story time with coworkers, ideation sessions with lots of yes ands and building on one another's ideas or something more interactive, a creativity activity with your hands? I am going to submit mine. Great. These responses are rolling in. Keep them coming. And we'll send this deck to everyone. So you can use this immediately. Go deploy someone on your team if you don't have time and say, hey, let's pump some of this into the work that we're doing right now. Let's supercharge our efforts. Let's get the creativity flowing and get the team inspired and motivated and start playing more in the work that we're doing. And I just think as innovators and marketers, we're so lucky that a lot of the things that we work on are conducive to this. Even if we're doing a deep dive insight program and we're going out and we're speaking with people, there's so many co-creation and interactive activities we can do with consumers that can elicit some really interesting information. And then if we're not doing insight work or we're not interacting with consumers or experts, we can get our team together and go out and explore or do some of these interactive pieces, even virtually. So there's just so many things I, I that I find we can do immediately that get those juices flowing. And we do a lot of that here at EBCO internally and externally with clients and with the team. Um, so if you're looking for any inspiration, definitely reach out, but you'll have this deck and you can take it back and, and see what you can make happen. All right, Jane, what does that poll look like? Yeah, thanks. Um... Survey says. Great. Okay, so about 50% of you say ideation sessions with yes and techniques, great. Um, followed by 23% would say moving around during meetings. Uh, that's something that we're certainly incorporating as we get more in person, but I find that we've been encouraging movement during our meetings virtually for a while. So we maybe we were ahead of the curve, I don't know. Um, ooh, origami or creative activity. That's at 18%. I love that. Uh, we've we've had a lot of experience personally here with, with Legos and getting our hands uh, engaged. We've done some drawing exercises. We're always trying to, to get our whole bodies moving. Yeah, and uh, coming out of COVID, there was a lot of brain fog, a lot of um, alone time. So having the ability to really bring our brains back is is great and it's refreshing and it's rejuvenating. So I'm really excited to hear how a lot of you are going to to work these into your work process. And actually that's that's the next slide here as we as we come to a conclusion on today's play webinar. 
what are ways that you could design play into your work? Something for you to, to think about. If you want to share it in the chat, go for it or think about it personally. And like we said, we will absolutely be sending this out for further inspiration. And if you have any concluding thoughts, please pump it into the chat. This is one of our favorite topics and we're just real grateful that all of you were able to join us today on our facilitating play webinar. And, and thank you to Jane for guiding us through such rich content and definitely was eye-opening an eye-opening way to think about play in the work environment. So often we leave it for kids, but it's for us too, everyone. It's for us too. So thank you. And I hope that you're all leaving inspired. Whenever I think of this, I feel inspired. And, and as Aaron mentioned, we will be sharing this deck out following this, this webinar. So you can always go back to this. You can share this with your team. Hopefully yes. And, and Heidi episode. said, Heidi said show and tell. And, and I don't, we didn't quite mention that, but show and tell is a huge one here at Epco. When we find really interesting products out there, things that are brand new, things that are being targeted to us on Instagram. And as you guys can imagine, we study so many different topics that we're, we're getting targeted by new things all the time. Show and tell is a big one. And it's, it's very a juvenile in nature. It's nostalgic, but it's so powerful for the work that we do. I love that one. Yeah. Thank you everyone so much for joining today. And as always reach out to us, if you think there's any opportunity to collaborate or to learn more about facilitating play in your work environment, we're always here to ideate and make things happen with you. Thanks everyone. This is great. Thanks, Jane.